I really miss the movies. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, my name is Amanda and you're watching Smile Entertainment. And just in case anyone is annoyed by my opening clip, my mask is in my lap. So I know a couple of weeks ago, I did a video talking about the feud-ish thing happening between Universal and AMC and other movie theaters and how once everything is allowed to reopen again post-pandemic, that I will not be right away comfortable with going to the movies. And that is still the case. What safety measures will be implemented at movie theaters is really going to be a deciding factor in when I consider it safe for myself to go back to the movies again, if that makes sense. But I do miss the movies. The movies were a huge part of my day-to-day -day life and my mental health pre-pandemic. <laughs> I know I talked a lot of shit on AMC, but prior to this, I had AMC A-list, which for like $24.99 a month, you were able to get three free movies a week and then also get discounts at concessions and things like that, which for someone like me, who would take out a lease in front of a movie screen, if she could, worked out perfectly. It paid off itself within a week because I was a psychopath who would sometimes go to the movies three times in one day. And I didn't realize how much that like affected my day-to-day -day, like mental health. Like if I had a bad day at work, I get off at 1 p.m. and then, oh, there's like a movie showing for a movie I haven't seen or a movie that I have seen, but I do like it too. Like I'll just go over to the movies and I'll just sit by myself with a big thing of popcorn in a dark room watching art for two hours and then I'm good, but I can't do that right now. So we need to look at other options. <laughs> I miss the movies. So I figured it'd be fun for myself to try and like get that movie theater experience in quarantine. And I might as well make a video on it because content, even in quarantine, there are some public places where you can see movies that are still open. And obviously this is gonna be dependent on your area because I live in Southern California. There are quite a few drive-ins still available. A lot of them are in fact closed still during quarantine. The closest one to me that was open was actually 40 minutes away in Montclair. This is a first time review for me technically because I've never been to a drive-in before. I went and saw a movie uh, that I've seen before for the fifth time. Knives out. If you want to see my review for it, check it out. So obviously the movie doesn't start, they don't start showing trailers until sundown. But you were able to get onto the lot an hour before. So I got there about 7, got my ticket for $10, you get to see two movies back to back on the same screen. On the ticket it gives you an FM radio station for you to tune to to listen to the movie from the comfort of your car. If you're worried about your battery dying, my car's a piece of crap and I had no issues. I just made sure to turn my car on fully here and there. You can also bring a portable radio and that was also an option. I had to open my car door for a reason during the movie, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. I could still hear the movie outside of my car with my car completely off. And that was partially because I believe there were other people whose windows were down while they were listening to the movie. So you kind of got the full experience of the movie, but I believe they also had speakers. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but my point is, is you have options. Just please, for the love of God, make sure your headlights are off. Especially if you were in the front row of cars, your headlights do not need to be on. If you think a cell phone in a movie theater is annoying, trust me, headlights are more annoying. But anyway, this is where I parked. I actually had a completely unobstructed view. All of the parking spots kind of have like a little incline to them. So regardless of where you're parked, you can pretty much completely see the screen. So for the movie, I wore my mask and I walked into the little concession stands, which was partially open. And I got a popcorn because though I did bring candy and water and soda and a bag of popcorn myself, I had the option to get concession popcorn. So I got concession popcorn. I will not apologize for that. It wasn't too hard to see the screen once the movie got started after trailers had stopped. But obviously as it got darker, it became easier to see the screen. And also I had no issues with the radio station the entire time I was there. And like I said, I love the movies, but I've also never really been that person that's comfortable with taking their shoes off in a movie theater, even even if I'm the only one that's in the movie theater. I just kind of think it's rude. It's like, that's not my house, you know? And it was just very nice to be able to sit in my car all bundled up in my blanket with my socks on and be able to watch Tony Collette dancing and Chris Evans and Anna DeArmas in sweaters. It was just a very nice experience. If you ever have the question of how many times is too many times to watch Knives Out, I'm assuming it's when you are able to say the donut speech alongside Benoit Blanc. Anyway, I now own it on Blu-ray. Also, I would just like to point out that being able to watch the study scene, like when you're alone in your car in like that enclosed setting and just watch it all unfolding. I don't even know how to like 
explain that feeling, but just Plummer and Armas are just incredible at that scene. But maybe you don't have a drive-in near you. Maybe you don't want to drive 40 minutes to a drive-in. Maybe you don't want to keep hearing helicopter sounds and then you finally look outside and you realize that they are circling um, the area just past the drive-in and you hear this when you open the door. I'm at a drive-in and uh, there's no I was able to lock my car and I had my stun gun with me, so I think I was fine. But maybe you're like, swell, we don't want to go outside at all because virus, I have children, I don't want to sit by myself, you know? Like maybe you're a normal human being who can function with other people. That's fine, we have options. Let's do a movie night at home. I have this ritual when I go to movie theaters and I prefer to go to movie theaters that are inside malls that have a pretzel shop. So not too long ago on Twitter, I saw someone say, hey, Auntie Anne's is selling their at-home pretzel kit, so guess what I bought? Made by hand to fit perfectly in yours, Auntie Anne's home pretzel kit. And this says it was packaged safely by Henry with love and gloves. Henry, if you see this, um, what are we? Now I just did this for myself and then my dad stole a couple. Everything is portioned out for you. They made the process incredibly simple. I had fun doing the regular pretzel shapes and then also kind of playing around with a little bit and making a shape that was totally not demonetizable. Now you're supposed to be able to get 10, but I made my pretzels thick boys and therefore I was only able to get nine. Obviously, depending on what you decide to do, you could get a bunch of different amounts of pretzels. If you had like roommates or a significant other or kids, like this would be really fun for you guys to like do together. Now you're gonna see in these clips, I have a TV on a bookshelf in the back background. We're not watching movies on that because the screen is not ideal. And though I can get Netflix on my TV, I can't get Hulu or anything else on there. Also, I can move my laptop around and therefore get more comfortable. Obviously, you can set this up wherever you want and with whoever you want. I just wanted to be comfortable and watch whatever I want, therefore I'm alone in my bed. <laughs> now, if you're using a laptop, I recommend using a stand or something to kind of elevate your computer off your bed or off the surface of wherever you're laying, partially for better viewing experience, but also to prevent overheating. I'm just using the box the computer came in and of case of LaCroix because I thought it would be more sturdy than a pile of books and I'm annoying. Now before I move forward for what else you need for your viewing experience, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network and I know what you're thinking, Amanda, no one's really going outside right now, no one's sitting in coffee shops or traveling. I understand, but eventually we will be doing that again. And though I do have a day job, I also do a lot of work at home and I did used to like breaking up the monotony of my day by leaving the distractions in my home and entering into the distractions of a coffee shop and getting a lot of work done there. Public Wi-Fi comes with certain dangers. You never know who else is on that public Wi-Fi. If you are on public Wi-Fi, your information can be vulnerable and NordVPN helps with that. NordVPN protects your data and also can work as an ad blocker. I know what you're thinking of, Swell, in quarantine, I have watched everything on Netflix You've watched everything on your Netflix, but have you watched everything on other Netflixes? NordVPN has super fast servers, over 5,000 in 60 countries, and it gives you the ability to unlock Netflix in other countries. So for example, UK Netflix has the entire Hannibal series, Sons of Anarchy, Vertigo, Blues Brothers, and the 1995 BBC Pride and Prejudice. NordVPN gives you more options. NordVPN has no data logging, it works on most operating systems, and they have 24-7 customer support, and 30 day money back guarantee. You get 70% off NordVPN for just $3.49 a month and an additional month for free if you go to nordvpn.com slash swell or use coupon swell. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash swell or coupon swell for 70% off NordVPN. Moving forward with your movie setup. Now, obviously you can set up your movie corner the way that you want, but I just decided to have all the pillows in the corner of my bed, big, thick, fluffy blanket. I highly recommend fluffy socks and comfy pants. Maximum comfort is what you're going for here. Remember, you are in your own house, not a movie theater. You can take your shoes off. I recommend it, actually. Please don't put shoes on your bed. You've got your popcorn, you've got your candy, you've got your totally non-demonetizable shaped pretzel. Now, obviously you can drink whatever you want, but to get the most mimicked experience of a movie theater at home. I just went to a drive-thru and got a large Dr. Pepper. Now I had no idea to watch, but luckily I have so many of you swell people following me on Twitter. So I tweeted out that I needed recommendations that were on Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video. And so many of you didn't do the required reading because so many of you recommended series. I'm sure they're all great, but that wasn't the question. <laughs> Originally I was only gonna watch movies that I had not seen previously, but A Man of the Jedi suggested Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and that was the only excuse I needed to watch Portrait of a Lady on Fire again. It's amazing. But one movie I haven't seen that was recommended by Chris Salazar with Six Underground on Netflix. I don't have a lot of opinions that would be interesting to share for Six Underground. And then I know I said I wasn't gonna do series, but I keep seeing the advertisements on Twitter for Defending Jacob and I got one episode for free 
from Apple TV. So I was like, okay, I'll just watch the first episode. And I'm so annoyed. It's so good. I don't need to pay for another streaming service. Why, why do you make a show where I get to look at Michelle Dockery, Chris Evans, and Betty Gabriel, and you expect me to not love the show? You expect me to show restraint and not pay for another streaming service? Incredible show, I'm annoyed. Honestly, it's rude, it's mean. That's what it is, it's mean. And that was pretty much it, I just watched my movies all night. And I know what you're thinking, Amanda, you're never gonna be able to like recreate or get that full movie theater experience at home. I know I'm not gonna be able to recreate the full feeling of going to the movies at home, and that's fine. And absolutely, once it's safe to do so, I absolutely wanna go back to the movie theaters. There are so many movies coming out that were supposed to currently be coming out, but have now been pushed to either the end of 2020 or 2021 that I would love to experience for the first time in front of a big screen in a movie theater. And like I said in my last video on this topic, there are plenty of people who, again, don't think it's safe to go back or they don't know when it will be safe or they don't have the disposable income to go and spend on a movie ticket. So these are temporary options and potentially permanent options. But also I know that there's a lot of you that follow me that have children that are doing what they can to try and keep your kids entertained at home in this time and setting up shop in the living room or you know, making a pillow blanket for it and watching movies together is a great way to do that in my opinion. I'm single with no children and I can only be around my dad and my brother for so long before I start losing my patience and my mind. So I need time alone. And I understand that a bunch of you need time alone as well and setting up a little movie night for yourself or even just a little movie night with you and your family in like a way that is comfortable for all of you. I think that's great. We're all just trying to find ways to get through this weird time. For me, that's making videos and watching movies and I highly recommend that everyone finds that for themselves as well in this time. But be safe, make good choices, take care of yourself and your loved ones and you absolutely deserve to have fun and be entertained in this time as well. That's gonna be it for this video. Have you ever been to a drive-in? What's a movie you've seen recently, whether it's on Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Video On Demand? What's your personal movie night setup? Let me know, comment down below. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, wash your hands, be safe, goodbye. If it makes you feel any better, this was on sale when I bought it, and it'll probably be the last amount of money that I spent on this movie. Most likely. Aaron, Adam, Alan, Elise, Alex, Bradley, Brighton, B. Young, Cameron, Cameron D., Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Dean, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckless, George, Jaren, Griffin, A., Hopeless, Jason, Jasper, John, M., John, Jonathan, Jordan, Kenneth, Kevin, Kim, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matthew, S., Matthew, Mean Lord, The Red, Michael, J., Michael, Nathaniel, Prylock, Rob, Sam, Stefan, Timothy, Torben, Tom, Victor, Wendy, William, Zendry.